Can you say you got saved? Where did you get saved from? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, I was I was just living a usual teenage life, you know, getting drunk, a bit of weed and stuff like that, and 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 just sort of living as all my friends were at that time. We, we just sort of you know depression and and find the kind of self uh, involvement. Um, I think I, in many ways, I wouldn't say I was like I didn't have the kind of testimony where I was a complete like a drug dealer type thing where everything completely, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I was the worst person on earth. I kind of didn't think I needed Christianity. I thought I was pretty happy. And then, I, but actually I realized I wasn't. And I realized the contrast when I saw Christian love in action, when I saw the church in action, when I saw these people, the way they res- spoke to each other, the way they cared for each other in, in response, in, in contrast to the, my, the way I live my life, it was just completely radically different. So I just realized, wow, this Holy Spirit guy is uh, is up to something and is is at work, and that was kind of powerful to see. Do you believe that human beings are in a fallen state? Oh, see what you did there with the uh, <clears throat> name of your show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the so I, absolutely, I believe that we are all in a fallen state until we're reconciled to God. I think we're all all humans are created in God's image. Um, but we've all tarnished that image with our sin. We've inherited sin from our father uh, uh, in, of humanity, as it were, Adam. But we've also sort of participated in that ourselves. And so we are fallen and we are depraved and need to be uh, woke, awoken, basically, brought to life, as it says in, in Ephesians, that God, God's rich, God who's rich in mercy and in the great love with which he loved us, he raised us from the dead when we were dead in our sins. And so there's no no person, however good they are, um, is good enough to s- sort of lift themselves out of the trough, lift themselves out of the pit themselves. They need to be wrenched out by God. And that's what we've all been. If those of us who call ourselves Christians, that's what that's what our story is. Whatever, whether we were drug dealers or not yeah. um, beforehand, we've all been lifted out of the pit, the miry bog, and our feet placed on a rock, uh, able to sing praises to God. And so have you overcome the fallen state um, yeah, I mean, that, I, would not, I would not, wouldn't normally put it in those terms, but I, I would say, in a way, yes, because I'm justified. Uh, any Christian is justified who, who confesses with their mouth and believes in their heart that Jesus is Lord. Um, you're saved. Um, it doesn't mean you're completely free of the entanglements of sin. And that's why, you know, in the New Testament, we have met various sort of warnings and cautions against sin. Now, like, don't return to that old life. Don't, don't return to your vomit like a dog returning to its vomit. So we all still struggle in, in our, you know, returning to that fallen state. But in reality, our identity is, my identity, I would say, as any Christian should be, is that we are justified um, and we're being sanctified or being made holy, even though we don't always feel it because we, we still struggle, that kind of thing. And, and how, what is sin exactly? What is sin Sin is uh, being separated from God. It's, it's when you go against God's law, when you, when you uh, disobey God, basically, in the way that he's set, uh, his, his commands that he's set out, his, um, his ideal for what it is to live a good human life. So when you, when you, when you choose the path of disobedience uh, is what leads to sin. I guess the, you know, the first example being Eve taking, taking the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil when told not to. But Satan comes in and tempts her to say, actually, he's only telling you that because he, he wants to keep something from you. And if you if you go this, you'll be better. You, you'll be elevated. You'll be like God. Um, and so that temptation to disobey God's clear command is is what sin is. And we all struggle with that, whoever whoever we are, whatever our name is, whether we've got reverend or doctor before our name, right. we all struggle with sin. And so are you saying that Sin is when you disobey God? Yeah, oh, sin see. is disobedience to God. Why do you say it's physical when he says it's spiritual? I think because the spiritual is worked out in and through the, the, real, the world that we live in. So we're not Gnostics. We don't believe that the spirit world is the real world and the flesh is like a kind of matrix-style uh, virtual simulation and we don't really need to care about it like the flesh the things the spiritual world is still worked out in and through the flesh which is why your bodies matter and what you do with your body matters um, and therefore 
uh, how you treat one another matters. So I think there are, for sure, um, ways that we can overemphasize fleshly um, divisions and fleshly categories. But evil... Um, it is a spiritual battle. Evil works through the flesh, right? Through the body. Evil spirit works through the body, the mind and emotions, right? Yeah, but it can work through... But that doesn't mean... So, so can the Holy Spirit. Right, so I'm about to say, once flesh, you're born again of the Father then good work mm -hmm. through the body, right? Mm -hmm. So it's still spiritual. And if you have not been born again of the Father, then you are an evil person, and that evil spirit is working through you. That's not racism. It's the word of evil. I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's, evil is the heart of it. So we, I guess you, but, but there's different so manifestations. So why not call it evil rather than giving it a dress-up name to hide the fact that it's evil by calling it racism or white supremacy. Why not call it evil? Because that's what it is. And how would the people mm -hmm. know it's evil if you're telling them that it's mm -hmm. something that it's not? You're covering up evil by mm -hmm. calling it racism rather than calling it what it is so that people can see what's really going on. Mm. No, I can see I can see the value of that, just to say actually that we cloud the issue by... Um, well, yeah, by kind of putting a certain category in it when the, re the real reality is we need to call evil evil. So as so, yeah. a preacher, why do you go along with the world way of covering up evil and calling it something that is not? Yeah, I don't think I do. I think I don't think I go to town. You believe uh, racism, about racism. You, believe, you believe that white supremacy. So you're going along yeah, with the yeah. evil people covering up evil. No, it's not covering up evil. You're just you're, you're just naming it specifically. So it's like saying, but evil doesn't why do we call lust? You need to call evil as it is, so you can know yeah, what but, you're dealing with to overcome but Paul, it. But Paul, Paul lists different sins, doesn't he, in the Bible? So there's different sins that we're called to challenge, and different works of darkness, different works of the flesh. We don't just say everything is evil indiscriminately. I, I agree that we can definitely distract ourselves from the deep problem, which is a spiritual issue of sin. Yeah. But actually, calling specifying how different sins work themselves out is uh, is necessary. And I think, you know, we don't, we go, those lists of sins we see in the Bible are, are not exhaustive lists. So what, I do think racism the, is... What's the list of sins? A sin. We have various lists of sins like in the New Testament. Like what for an example, because of time, give me an example, a short example of the list of sins in the Bible. So 1 Corinthians 6 will be one where you have sort of those who are not going to inherit the kingdom of God, um, such as those who practice homosexuality, etc. You could have Romans 1, where you have um, the, the kind of the ultimate problem of sin, that we've chosen our creation rather than our creator. And then so God gave us up to the lusts of the flesh, including being inflamed with lust for one another uh, in terms of the but uh, same God sex doesn't stuff. But God doesn't call any of those things sins. Why do you call them sins? Well, we call. Uh, I think I think it's appropriate to call it a sin because it's but it's part God of that. That's call theologically. It, if God doesn't call it sin, and none of the prophets call it sin, why do you call those things sin and not really point out what sin really is? Because I think that's it. it like that is, it is theologically that is what sin is. But that's, because not, I what, think anything that's not what Christ did, called it. That's not what God called it. Why do you call it something that is not? Because by calling well, you, those things to sin, the people are fighting with those things, thinking that that's to sin. And as a result, they're not dealing with the real sin and they're not overcoming. Mm. Because if you well, overcame the real sin, those things would disappear. What do you see as the real sin then? So you don't, if you don't think those things that are listed at various points in the New Testament as works of darkness or work, works of the flesh or whatever we, the term is specifically... It's not, most Christians would say that sin is a category that is an umbrella over all of that. And so it doesn't really hinder someone. But uh, the problem might, I think the thing you're getting at, it sounds like, is if you overemphasize that one of those particular categories, you miss the big picture, which is like our sin. Um, the real sin. But I, I just, I think it's, it's an outwork. Sin is like our condition. We're being corrupted. We're being but, corrupted in the fallen state. And actually, we're, ne we're needing to be renewed. And sit, like we're returning to our sinful state, which is kind of like an oxymoron. Like it shouldn't really be happening. But then that's the what Paul sin, kind of points out again and again. The real sin is of the heart. Anyone that has anger is mm. sinning. 
because they were going against God, they were playing God, they judged themselves <clears throat> and other people, and, and, when you, and, and as a result of being angry, which is hatred, which is judgment, you judge <clears throat> yourself, you judge other people, and then you get into the nature of those things you name, because that's <clears throat> the nature of the devil, that's the nature of sin, it's the work of the <clears throat> flesh, because your heart <clears throat> is wicked and separated from God. And so mm -hmm. if you overcome anger by forgiving and returning to the mm -hmm. Father, then that mm -hmm. nature, which is of the devil, homosexuality, mm -hmm. lesbians, mm -hmm. uh, rob, stealing, rape, and murder, mm -hmm. gossiping, uh, revenge, mm -hmm. fear, loneliness, mm -hmm. all those things are the work of the devil because you are of yeah. the devil because your heart is of the mm -hmm. devil. Mm -hmm. But when you mm -hmm. realize you're wrong for being angry, and you repent mm -hmm. by forgiving, especially your mother, because she's recreated mm -hmm. you in her image. When you forgive them, your mother, your father, God will forgive you. And he would change the heart, salvations of the heart. And then he would destroy the works of the devil. All these things mm -hmm. you've been into, your vices and things like that. Because your nature mm -hmm. would change from that of the devil to the nature of God. Mm -hmm. And in his nature, none of those things exist. Mm-hmm. What yeah, no, I agree. I, I just don't think that me means you just, you can't call those other things that happen. But that, you that call the, those things, and when you do that, you're covering up the real sin, which is of the heart. And most people never have to. deal with no, the you don't heart. Have to. You don't have to cover them up. It just means, I think you're right, I agree with you 100%. The heart issue is the issue. God and, and says salvation is of the heart. The Anyone that has anger Absolutely. is a murderer. 100%. Yeah, but so it's just that you don't... You can, you can still diagnose a particular issue. It's like someone's got a sickness, right? You don't go, hey, look, it's just sick. I just take them to the hospital. They're just sick. Well, sometimes it's helpful to know that they've got cancer or it's helpful to know that they've got a broken leg or that they their voice box has been busted or something. Then that's a very American term, busted. So um, <laughs> it, like, it, like you go, you, you have different conditions, but they're still the same condition. We're still like a broken down body. We're still struggling. and We're not in our perfect state. We're in the fallen state. But we need to diagnose certain issues. And that's, that's what it is. It's all sin. But I can but it's just promise you, I promise you without a doubt, there's not one person walking this earth that has worked with the vices and not the heart. When they work mm. with the vices but not the heart, they never overcome. They never mm. get better. That's why they say, oh, I keep doing it over and over again. I keep sinning. I keep sinning. Mm. Because they have not dealt with the real thing. You yeah. deal with the Amen. heart. Yeah. You deal with the <clears> heart. And and and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and God will return you to Him. You would never sin any more of the heart, and then the vices would disappear. You wouldn't have to do them anymore either. Yeah, they would be taken yeah. away from you. Testify, brother. Love it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's it. The heart. The heart issue. It's is, the heart is, is the it. sin. Yeah, not, not yeah. the vices. I mean, the vice is just, it's just yeah. It's just the kind of it's the nature of the, of the devil heart. because it's the works yeah. of the devil. Now you're of the devil, so you have his nature.